good morning. Nothing like a frosty chill at sunrise to get you up. So during our next walk and talk today, we're gonna to talk about whether or not movies have ruined books. So that's kind of a hotly debated thing. I think it originates from Stephen King's little commentary on writing, where he talks about how if you are watching movies or if you're watching TV and you're not reading books, then it's very unlikely that you'll ever become a good author. Um, and so that's taken a lot of people just, and then there's also the conundrum where people like books rather than the movies whenever a book becomes a movie. So we're gonna talk about whether or not that's actually true. And so to do that, I think it's important to know a little bit about the history. And again, for those just joining us, I'm feeding my chickens as we talk about this. Well, ducks first, but. So I think it's important to know a little bit about um, what movies are, okay? And to know about the history of storytelling and the human race. So I'm gonna have to dip this twice because my bucket is a bit low at the moment. So for thousands of years, hundreds, thousands of years, um, people had oral traditions. And so they would just tell their stories, tell the history of their people. Let me get the ducks out. Here they all come. So they would tell each other these stories and they passed down their histories through an oral tradition. Well, this all changed when people started writing. And so now they could save their stories. Um, they could tell the exact same story to the next generation instead of just having to memorize and hoping that you got it right. So that's a big change for people. And then of course, writing became streamlined. You had things like the Gutenberg Press. So now not only could writing be reproduced, you didn't have to do it by hand. You could do it instantly and quickly. And this led to one of the biggest changes in um, religious landscape because it was able to get the Bible, which had been previously in Latin, into the hands of the common folk, as well as several other materials as well, political and otherwise. And so this brought about great changes in the world as we know it. Well, what are movies, if not the next evolution of that growth? Because now we're adding pictures. So it's not just pictures, it's actual faces and people talking about their thoughts and their feelings. And you get to see their emotions and see what they're thinking, essentially, um, while they're on screen before you. And so our books better than movies? The answer to that is a resounding no, they're not. Especially in the uh, context of social media, where a movie or a video of some sort of a current event can be shared over multiple platforms to thousands and millions of people in the click of a button, I would arguably say that no, books are not better. You can only get books into a certain amount of hands. Um, and a lot of times there's physical limitations. It is harder still to develop and send a physical copy of a book to somebody on the other side of the world. Whereas in movies, you can do that with the click of the button. I recently had an interview with a lady in Thailand because of this phenomenon. I'm gonna stop here because I can see this. That's a river, it's my puppy dog. She's a good girl. She's running on the frost. Um, so you just can't compete with that. Now there is a challenge for people who have grown up with books or grown up with movies and other media, video media, when it comes to writing. Because they're completely different mediums. People fail to realize that. And so we've seen recently a trend of writers writing as if they're writing a screenplay. Very, very minimum descriptions. Um, they kind of have to, they pan about the room. Everything is described, not from the um, character's head, but through the character's actions, which to a certain extent is important, but it's not the main focus. I forget that they can do a deep dive and enter the thoughts of their characters. Hello, Mr. Rooster, you're just gonna tell us all about it, aren't you? So, there's a couple places where that's going to come into play. Um, you can also mess with the timeline of movies a little bit too. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta show you here. You wanna tell us some more about it? Oh, you're done now? 
You're not going to talk to us anymore? Oh, your buddy is going to talk to us, though. So, yeah, feeding the chickens is a little distracting, but we will get the hang of it. So, with movies, you have another constraint, and that's time. And in order to compare and contrast the two mediums, I'm going to actually talk about Stephen King's book, Misery. Because I saw, excuse me, and yes, there are going to be a few spoilers. The book came out, and the movie came out, like, decades ago. So if you haven't seen it yet, and I'm going to spoil it for you, sorry, but I'm going to claim that is your own fault. Um, so there are a couple of key differences found in this book to movie adaptation. Uh, the probably the most glaring one is that in the book, um, Kathy Bates' character, Annie, cuts off the protagonist's leg. Full on cuts it off. In the, in the movie, she hobbles him, where she takes a sledgehammer to his legs. Uh, so that's a big difference, right? It's like, why would they change that? Well, when you realize suddenly you've got to do prosthetic work on your actor, and you've now hobbled his leg, as in removed it, uh, it's going to cause some problems for you as uh, the production staff. So, and then there's another change where Paul Sheldon, the main character, actually falls in love with the manuscript he's been writing for Annie. Uh, in the end of the book, he takes it with him. He pretends to burn it up and takes it with him. At the end of the movie, he just burns it up. It's like, why would the director choose that? Well, it's because they didn't have as much time with Paul to show him growing attached basically becoming dependent on this book for his psychological survival. And so they chose to remove that element. Because it would just take too much time to explain. And the viewers would not understand why he kept it um, at the end of the movie. So, they're just different in a lot of ways. But there's one part I really appreciated in Stephen King's book. Where he played with time and created a greater part where you know you're expecting um created a sense of expectation okay so you've known that annie has already cut off his leg it's horrible and then you have another scene show up and she's cut off his hand or his thumb at least sorry not his whole hand but he doesn't show the scene where she's cut off his hand or his thumb it just shows the fact that he doesn't have a thumb anymore and so you're left to wonder what happened and so he gets to drag you along kicking and screaming as you ask the question what just happened and um, it's brilliant it's brilliant because it keeps you turning pages turning pages and there's that literary element that he was able to add because he wrote it instead of because of making the movie so in su summary I know I've kind of gone on for a long time here no movies are not better than books but if you're going to participate as an artist in either industry you need to know that industry and understand the limitations as well as the benefits. You need to know why you're writing what you're writing. You need to know if your story would be better as a screenplay or as a book. And then study other mediums, they, hopefully those in your genre, to figure out how to recreate that or how to meet those readers' expectations. You might find out your books or your story is not best fit for a book. Maybe it's not long enough. It would make a great movie. So a screenplay is your option. Or you might find that you want your readers to deep dive into your character's life, character story for the next 10 hours, develop those attachments to your characters, and so you decide that you want to write something like that. Either it's fine, you just got to know your medium. So no, just because you don't, you like to watch movies or TV shows, it does not mean you're going to be a horrible author. Um, but it will require you to do a little legwork to figure out what is best for your characters and for your story and for you as the writer. But those are just my two cents, those are my thoughts, do with them what you will. Have a good morning, y'all.